Harlem at the crack at the height of his crack era was hard to deal with. But what made Harlem and even the Bronx even more harder to deal with was a man named Clarence Preacher Heatley, the head of the Preacher Crew. This man was so dang dangerous. He was featured in the historical movie. This is a true story. It was featured in a movie. His crew was so strong and so powerful, you could only learn parts of it. Who remembers paid in full? All right. Paid in full was one of the best movies I ever seen in my life. That, Scar Scarface, and a few other movies. You know what I mean? Hood, hood movies, definitely. Boys, Boys in the Hood. But Paid in Full and Scar, Scarface stands out as the two best movies, hood-wise, I've ever seen in my life. And um, the Preacher Crew was so strong. Like, Johnny Apple, the, the names have changed in, in, in that movie. You remember the part when the when the when the boy was supposed to have been in his bed sleep, but then um the uncle was getting high in his in his room and the uncle said, Money making Sonny. Alright, Sonny was Don Donnell Porter, but they changed his name to Sonny. Money making Sonny. Alright. Johnny Apple was the uncle that was getting high and Makai Pfeiffer played Mitch, who was Rich Porter. Cam Cameron Giles, shout out to his uncle, Billy Billy Giles. I know him. He's a good boxing coach. I know him from from the um damn gyms. Guy got more damn game than Parker Parker Brothers, and Wood Wood Harris. All right. The Preacher Crew was a strong crew. Clarence Pre Clarence Preacher Heatley had two main guys by his side at all times. It was a cop named Jack Cuff. He was a, he was an ex-cop and he became down with the crew. And a brother named Ma Malik, who used to be with Johnny Johnny Apple Apple a lot. When Johnny Apple set his nephew up to be caught by the preacher crew, he led him to Ma Malik, who proceeded to kidnap him. Now, the preacher crew really didn't want to touch that because Rich Porter was um, using Sonny as muscle. You know what I'm saying? But the uncle was making things bad for him and his crew. And for the uncle to get down with the crew, he fought because he was really like just ling lingering around. He wasn't bringing in no big money. So to cash in, he came up with a game plan. Let's kidnap my nephew. And that's what they wound up doing. They wound up kidnapping the kid. The preacher didn't really want nothing to do with it, but he seen their faces. So they really couldn't let him go after that. They couldn't let him go. There's no way in the world. So they killed him. You know what I'm saying? God, God forbid. Rest in peace, Don Donnell Porter. Now, M Malik was the one that cut off the finger. He was a... Um, Mer merciless assassin like he enjoyed killing people he enjoyed blood so they had to get rid of him now it came out Jack Cuff and M Malik was fighting for the number two spot Jack Cuff was the ex-cop Malik was the ex-army guy so they trying to convince Preacher to kill he, like Jack trying to convince Preacher to kill M Malik and Malik trying to convince Preacher to kill Jack Cuff Eventually, they tricked M Malik to coming down to the basement, said they had somebody for him to cut up or whatever to kill. And when he got down, down there, Jack Cuff was waiting in the cuff, in the cut, and he killed him. If I'm not mistaken, they told Malik, we're going to kill Jack. So M Malik like, yeah, I, I want him my damn self. And when he went down there, they killed him 
You know what I'm saying? And they cut his head off. They took his head, they wrapped his head in a saran wrap, took his head on the roof, and started playing soccer with it, started playing basketball, basketball with it. This made one of the guys from the crew real scared because he started turning states. Now people started turning states now. So the preacher crew knew the guy was turning states. When he came out the DDA office, they seen him. He seen the preacher crew and waiting across the street front for him. So he ran. He got, got away from them just in the nick of time and he hid. You know what I'm saying? So that's what happened to him. Eventually, the whole crew started falling. The preacher crew got this dismantled. Preacher got caught. He turned states immediately. While they had him in the car, escorting him to the priest, and he started giving them names. One of the names he gave up was Johnny Apple. Now, Johnny Apple never did time for killing his nephew. He should have. He started talking to the dis district attorney over the years. They already had his name. They just didn't let Pat Porter and them know at the time. It took years before he finally went to jail. But he didn't go to jail for killing his nephew. He went to jail for second degree murder, but they never mentioned the name. They tried to make it seem like it was the nephew, but he really took the time for James Taylor, a.k.a. M Malik. His karma, he's going to have to live with that for the rest of his life. That's his murder, murder sentence for his nephew. He never went down for him. So when they came to him with the story, he told the, the dis district attorney what they wanted to hear, what he wanted to tell him. Eventually they locked him up and he did 20 years. But really that time wasn't for his nephew. That was for drug conspiracy and murder of Malik. Please like and subscribe. We're going to get this thing popping. The North Father's out. Be back soon. It's my turn. Shout out to you too. I want you to look, look, look into this. Peace.